Well, hi there, everybody. This is Justin Dyke from CartoonSmart.com, and I'm here to teach you a little bit of Swift 2, some Sprite Kit, and Xcode 7, which is on the bleeding edge of iOS development tools, but in about a month or so, it won't be. So you can either go with uh, Xcode 6, or if you want to go ahead and download Xcode 7, that is available and uh, just to introduce myself a little bit further I, uh, I own cartoonsmart.com I founded the company but I try not to rest on my laurels there and uh, I do teach uh, almost all the iPhone or iOS development uh, tutorials and I've been making apps since well close to the beginning of uh, when the iPhone came out so let's go ahead and uh, open up Xcode 7 so the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, create a new project and you can get to uh, the screen you're seeing right now by just going to file new and then project. Be sure you don't go to new file. You want new project. And uh, since we're going to be incorporating in some uh, visual elements, let's go with uh, game. I think that's a great starting template. And uh, you can choose iOS application game. Just click on next right here. And we'll just call this uh, demo Swift 2. We do want the language to be Swift and game technology sprite kit and for devices we can go ahead and put in universal it's really not going to matter uh, which uh, device we test this on and then let's go ahead and just uh, create that right there on the uh, desktop arguably the worst place to create a project <laughs> You never know what could happen there on the desktop. All right, so uh, here we go. We're looking at the general settings for uh, Xcode. And if you're really just interested in jumping into learning uh, Swift, I guess we should just go ahead and do that. Uh, you can kind of figure out a lot of this stuff uh, on your own, whether or not you want it to be portrait, landscape, all that good stuff. You know what? I'll just click off portrait and we'll, we'll build for a landscape mode. So let's go over here to our uh, game scene.swift file. The game view controller basically just launches this scene right here so we're not gonna worry about uh, programming anything inside of there and uh, this game scene dot swift file is gonna give us a great place to just kind of get started uh, doing stuff with code uh, but let's clean it out just a little bit if I were to build this right now this code right here is gonna create a little spaceship that's just gonna be spinning around on the screen and uh, by default you're gonna see some text on the screen that just says hello world let's go ahead and get rid of all of that so everything from um, this line down to where that uh, closing bracket is that closes off this opening bracket we've gotten rid of and then same thing for the uh, the touches let's chop out all of this but I'll go ahead and leave in uh, let location dot touch dot location node in there in case we would decide to you know play around with the uh, that uh, that variable that's getting set up for us and you know if in Swift 2 if you ever don't uh, use anything they're gonna tell you about it they'll say oh, consider replacing it with uh, with an underscore but uh, we'll just kind of ignore that little yellow warning for right that it's I don't even want to call it a warning it is a warning but it's it's something that we can safely ignore so now if we were to build this project what are we gonna see absolutely nothing at all and uh, the simulator is loading up right here so let's go ahead and get ready to okay all right see I proved it nothing in there <laughs> just a gray screen so first let's take a look at creating some properties in this scene or really just variables uh, that we can use inside of any of our other functions and I'm going to do that uh, right below this bracket right here and outside of any of these uh, functions that came in here uh, by default so let's begin with a simple number and we'll look at what Swift complains about when I do this. We're going to say my number int uh, equals 10. So this is going to be an integer. It's not going to be a decimal value. And when we move to view or basically just when the scene opens up, let's go ahead and print out our number right here. And if I were to go ahead and build this, I think I can guess what it's going to give me. No, okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. Usually what it would do is it would tell you that we, we haven't changed this number at all. So what, or you haven't really kind of written to it. And in that case, it prefers that you just put in here, let my number, uh, and then you specify again, that it's going to be an integer and it's going to equal 10. So it's, 
the number is not going to change at all over time. In this case, it's always going to be equal to 10. But of course, you know, that maybe is not what we want. We might want this to actually be a variable that we can assign different values to over time. And uh, if you notice, when I hit build, I got 10 over here in the output window. And that's what this print statement does back in the swift one days from ages ago like a few months ago uh we we had this option of print line which was kind of kind of a silly option right there you had to go and put ln after print and uh if you didn't do that what would happen is it would just not do another line you just get you know print after print after print after print in a row so this was a nice little change in swift 2 and for, for me it's one of the bigger ones all right so let's uh let's look at some of the other number number options we've got right here i could put in here uh, float okay and if i want to make this a decimal value uh, i could do that uh, another common one is uh, u i n t 32 so it's an unsigned integer you guys can go ahead and google the 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 max value of that number but it is a little bit lower than uh, float uh, but let's go ahead and just keep this as an int for right now it makes things uh, pretty simple it could be a, a positive or negative number and then let's look at our next probably most common variable type which is going to be a string so this is going to be characters right i mean it could actually be a number i mean you could do something like this Okay, but uh, now it is a string value representing a number. But you know, if, if we were to print both of these out, there's really not going to be uh, any difference. So if I went down here and I put in my string, and keep in mind too that um, I can use these variables in any one of these functions. So if I want to just take these both of these out of here, put them inside of this statement, I guess I'll just comment out this line for right now. Uh, let's uh, let's take a oh well now that one's the problem. Yeah, okay. I get you. So if I were to uh, touch down anywhere on the screen, you'll notice I output out those same uh, two numbers again. Point is, though, is these are accessible to other functions. If I were to take these two lines and just put them inside of here, I'm going to get an error because what it has no idea what I'm talking about I declared these variables local to this function that's a keyword right there is local so let's go ahead and uh, put them back out that way we don't really need them in here and you know what let's do this let's comment out all this stuff so because I now I am tired of seeing that little yellow warning right there if you ever want to comment out to that code or, or big blocks of it you just do this slash the star and then you do the opposite we're gonna close that off so this function is still in here it just is doing absolutely uh, nothing at all and uh, let's talk a little bit about optionals right now this is kind of a uh, confusing concept if you're a uh, new programmer but what I could have done instead of uh, giving this a specific value is put in here a question mark and uh, then what happens is it's kind of it's it's optional it, it may or may not have a value so let's take a look at what happens when I come down here and I say my string is going to equal cartoonsmart.com and I, I print this out let's actually just hit build on it real fast and you know what it's not it's not uh, forcing me to bring in a, uh, to get a value out of this right now, but you'll notice that in the output window, it does say optional cartoonsmart.com. So it is, it is kind of reminding me that, hey, maybe this doesn't have a value to it. So if you want to force a value out of it, what you're going to do is put that uh, exclamation point right there. And then you'll notice in the output window, optional has now gone away and it says cartoonsmart.com. Uh, so uh, it's... And you're, you're probably wondering, well, okay, I get that, but uh, when when am I going to use it? You know, <laughs> when's that actually apply? We don't have much to work with, but I think if we try this, let's say if let uh, my website equal, and then put in here my string. And by the way, you know what? Let me back up one step. Notice too, when I start to type in there my string, it gives me a little indication here that this is this could be an optional value, or it is an optional value, I should say. And uh, all right, so now what I inside of this statement, I'll say uh, print my website. Okay, so I've made an if condition here to try to make a new variable equal to uh, my string, which s should succeed. All right, so what we'll see down here is. Uh, 
two instances of cartoonsmart.com. But watch what happens if I take this out now. So uh, my string, which was optional, doesn't have any value. Let me um, comment this one out because if I try to force a value out of it and it doesn't have one, I am going to crash. But I could, I should be able to safely uh, do this statement right down here. And sure enough, now we're not seeing uh, the website get printed out at all. And what's more encouraging really is that did not crash right here. So watch what happens though if I do try to force a value out of it. Uh, it it's gonna let me succeed, but then fail not so gracefully. So look at that, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. Now if I, actually had a value for that it's not going to crash on me but it's it's programmably what I did here is I, I I tried to do something I shouldn't I try I you know I knew that there wasn't a value in here and I forced one out of it now you can this probably seems really confusing if you're a brand new programmer, but there's a really nice way that you can kind of unconfuse yourself. Let's get rid of all this. Uh, if you don't want to make things optional, then just don't do it, okay? And watch this. We're going to just make our strings equal to kind of nothing at all right here. Uh, in theory, this, I, this does still have a value to it. It's almost like if you just put a space in here, okay? But uh, you can test against it, like basically equaling nothing, which it's... I, I hesitate saying it does equal nothing, but watch this. You could put in here if my str my string uh, does not equal what we get. It gave it over here, okay? Uh, and then we can just put in here uh, print my string, right? Else, oh, print. Uh, I I guess it doesn't equal much, right? And let's run that. And of course, let's just get rid of that right now. Oh, actually, no, we could leave that in there, come to think of it. You're just not going to, uh, well, you know what? Because it's no longer optional, it doesn't want that, either the exclamation point or the uh, question mark in there. So again, kind of you know easing yourself into doing this. Uh, when I printed this line out, of course, I got the space over here because it just printed out essentially nothing. And then this if else statement over here, first it's checking to see if my, str my string does not equal what it currently does and uh, if so it it would have printed out any other value down here otherwise it's gonna go oh, okay well I guess it doesn't equal much and if you want to kind of reverse these to make it a little bit easier on your brain you you could do uh, if my string equals what we started with over here then we'll put that over this way otherwise print out what the string equals so we can change my string at any time over here so we can just say my string equals cartoonsmart.com and then print this out one more time and you'll see that of course we get the uh, domain name in there and again we got that twice because we're printing it out on uh, both lines uh, so uh, that's uh, that's kind of a uh, one workaround for doing that. Uh, one of the, my, I think my biggest failings when I first started learning uh, uh, Swift was that I, I did think everything had to be optional. Okay, so uh, for some reason I just didn't think, wait a minute, I could just set the string up to be any value. Uh, and then kind of the entire time I was working with the, the, the variables and whatnot, I was having to go, wait a minute, do I have to force a value out of it? Is it optional? Things like that. Uh, so uh, just, just keep that in mind. If you want to avoid it altogether, uh, just make your variables equal to something, even if it's uh, just a case like this, where you're just going to say, hey, you know, it's going to equal zero for right now. Uh, because a lot of times, as soon as you you know, begin your first, you know, kind of block of code in here, your did move the view statement, you probably will end up making certain valuable variables equal to something right away. So it becomes even more pointless to have them be optional in the beginning. Uh, and I think that's going to do it for our first video here. And by the way, before I'm gone for good in this particular video, I'm going to shamelessly plug all of Cartoon Smart's offerings. We have uh, a subscription plan for uh, under $14 a month use a discount and you get access to not only all of our iOS tutorials but kind of everything I'm scrolling down here you'll have access to it's over 500 hours it's probably more than that now because I haven't counted it recently but it's uh, all sorts of stuff and you even get some uh, bonus uh, royalty free game art and you get access uh, to our uh, latest uh, starter kit which uh, uses uh, Swift 2 so it is an amazing uh, buy and uh, 
you know, I, I got to stay in business here, so I got to do a little shameless plugging. All right, uh, I'll try not to the uh, next video, though.